signs of trouble have begun a barely a few days after the death of former DMK president and five-time chief minister of Tamil Nadu, M. Karunanidhi. In what could be the beginning of a succession battle, older son, M. K. Aragiri, has claimed he has the support of his late father's followers. This is being seen as an open challenge to his younger brother, M. K. Stalin, who is widely expected to take over the reins of the DMK as party president. Uh, Karunanidhi had uh, made it clear in his life time that Stalin would be his political heir. So what does this newest twist in Tamil Nadu politics uh, mean for a state that sends 39 MPs to the Lok Sabha? Uh, to speak on this, I'm joined by uh, two uh, very keen political journalists with their ear to the ground, uh, Dhania Rajendran, editor-in-chief of the News Minute, and uh, Narayan Lakshman, associate editor at The Hindu. Uh, welcome to both of you. Thank you for speaking with us. Uh, Dhania, I'll start with you. I'm assuming there would be no great surprise seeing the statement that has come from Arigiri, uh, was it expected that he would challenge his brother sooner or later? Well, yes, uh, the fact that he would challenge his brother was expected. What was perhaps not expected was that it would happen so soon, barely a week after M. Karnandi passed away. Uh, so, Alagiri has been making statements throughout the day to the media. It, of course, started with him making that first statement uh, near uh, Marina Beach at the Anna Memorial. Later through the day, in fact, he spoke to us also sometime back in which he's saying that he's going to have a meeting with his followers in Madurai, and then he will decide what to do as far as the DMK is concerned. Uh, he's giving mixed signals whether he wants to come back to the DMK, form something on his own, or even join someone like Rajni Khan. But he definitely wants to challenge Stalin is what it looks like. The Stalin camp, of course, maintains their unfazed and that Alagiri could not make much of a difference because his influence has been waning over the years. Uh, uh, Narayan, how do you look at uh, this situation? Uh, is uh, Arigiri in any way a serious uh, challenge uh, to M.K. Stalin at this point? Would there be some resonance uh, for his narrative of the older son who was left by the wayside? Well, Tamara, I think the uh, narrative, as you put it, uh, doesn't really resonate at this point uh, specifically. Uh, and that is because Obviously, the heavyweights of the DMK cadre are firmly behind uh, Stalin. Even uh, people who uh, Alagiri brought in, like uh, Tangam Tenaris and so on, have gravitated towards Stalin over time. And obviously, we have the bigger picture of a fairly formal uh, succession plan being in place where Karnanadi pretty much uh, anointed Stalin as his successor, even if not formally saying so, and him occupying the working president uh, role for the past few years. Uh, and at the same time, of course, let's not forget that he did evict Aragiri in uh, 2014 from the party itself. So in that sense, uh, Aragiri's standing today is not very strong. But uh, if I were in Stalin's shoes, uh, I would take the threat very seriously because what it effectively does is hold Stalin's feet to the fire because tomorrow, if Stalin fails to deliver, if he fails to be the kind of organizational genius that his father was, uh, and if he fails to deliver upon some upcoming election results, uh, Aragiri will be sort of the potentially viable alternative to whom the MLAs may suddenly drift or abandon Stalin and uh, choose in, in Stalin's favor. Now, I mean, that is speculation. And of course, it, as I said, it depends on the outcome of elections uh, such as the by-elections in Tiruparan Kundram and uh, Tiruva Road, where uh, Karnanadi was uh, held the seat. And of course, the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, all of these will be signals to the DMK cadre as to which way the wind is blowing. And so in that regard, Stalin would do well to take this threat seriously and to really uh, delve into the organizational aspect of the DMK. When it comes to Aragiri's uh, strongholds, uh, Narayan, can you uh, explain to us uh, how much power he actually wields um, in a real sense? And uh, does he have enough followers or a strong enough power base to uh, maybe even split away and uh, form another political formation? that could challenge the existing players? Well, I, mean, I think it's a little uh, doubtful at this point. And okay, let's put it in context. So he obviously is, as uh, everyone knows, a strong man, a political heavyweight from the south uh, near the Madurai area. And uh, he has a strong following there. Uh, the fact, however, is he is a... Uh, you know, to put it uh, fairly candidly, there is an element of thuggishness that has been associated with him in the past, which 
some of the DMK leadership, top leadership, including Stalin and his uh, group, uh, kind of step away from. Uh, he has been associated with, however, acquitted in several cases of even uh, murder of Tak uh, Kiritinen and the uh, burning of the Dinakaran offices in uh, 2007. Uh, several of his uh, for, uh, people associated with him, Portu Suresh and Attack Pandian, have been in violent uh, conflicts with each other. So he stands apart in this sense of thuggishness from some of the DMK cadre. Uh, Obviously, even the mainstream cadre have been linked to such events. Uh, but politically, that does not translate into much. Because politically, as much as you, you could even say Stalin is unproven, Aragiri is even more unproven as a political quantity in terms of delivering actual results in an election on the ground. Stalin himself only has... Uh, obviously, his mayoral background, but also the 2016 election, he failed to deliver. Though Karnanandi was still the head of the party, uh, he was already ailing and uh, had stepped back. And that election was Stalin's to lose, and indeed he lost it. So, in that regard, it's a question of picking the best of a not so good pack. And Dana, can you explain to us why Aragiri would now, just less than a week after his father's demise, come and make these claims when it is in so publicly known that his father himself was upset with him uh, towards the end, that Stalin was the heir? Uh, it was all crystal clear. So, uh, knowing all of this, why would he come and pose this challenge? What is he hoping for in the bigger picture? Well, I think there's a sense of disappointment as far as Alagiri is concerned. From whatever I know, around two weeks ago, there were some discussions within the DMK where some suggestions were put forward that perhaps Alagiri can be taken back into the party. But it seems that a group of people uh, who work around Stalin actually said no. So Alagiri may have seen a possibility of his coming back to the party, and suddenly that possibility was blocked, uh, and there was no way he could come back to the party. Perhaps it's a disappointment speaking out. Uh, Alagiri has been giving open challenges. In fact, throughout the day, he's been telling Tamil media and uh, English television channels and others that he will uh, uh, call a meeting of his supporters. But I really doubt that he has uh, the, the Carter support to do that as of now. He would, I think, perhaps first try to win over a few leaders uh, to his side to make sure that they perhaps voice his anguish when the DMK meeting happens. If that do does not happen, then he would go out for an all-out rebellion. Let's see, tomorrow, more than 700 uh, party members and leaders of DMK will converge in Chennai. It is basically a condolence meeting, but in which we think uh, that Stalin's leadership will be t uh, taken into consideration. There could even be some sort of resolution. Uh, let's wait and see if someone actually takes up Alagiri's cause there. But as of now, I think Alagiri is a disappointed man that uh, two weeks ago, a path was not worked out for his return to the party. Well, um, we saw what happened in the AIADMK shortly after uh, Jai Jai Lalita's death. There was an implosion in the party. Can the DMK stick together long enough, at least till 2019? Uh, this is a story which uh, will possibly unfold very quickly. Thank you so much, uh, Dhania and Narayan, for joining us in this quick analysis.